Hey all you chocolate cupcake lovers, I'm Chef Kendall and welcome to my kitchen. It's National Chocolate Cupcake Day. I'm here to help you celebrate by baking up some chocolate cupcakes. They can be frosted, filled, plain, or even gourmet style. Along with all the ingredients and utensils, do got those math measuring skills. You will need two sticks of unsalted butter, one cup of brown sugar, one cup of sugar, four large eggs, six ounces of unsweetened chocolate, two cups of cake flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of buttermilk, and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. You stir and mix all these ingredients, measure accurately for your best results, and into the oven they go. And ta-da, you have chocolate cupcakes. These are easy to make and delicious to eat treats. I'm Chef Kendall, now back to my cupcake. Don't you just love reading? I know I do. And I love getting great books at the Fall Book Fair. Kendall here, and this year's theme is Here's to Our Heroes. The people I consider to be heroes are nurses who help take care of sick patients, police officers who help keep our city safe, and firefighters who stamp out fires. You might even think that other people can be heroes too. I know that I can count on these people to keep us safe. So, here's to our heroes for saving the day. And here's to our heroes book fair begins Friday, October 1st. Bring money for picking out good books. I'm Kendall, reporting for WKPN. Keep safe, whiz kids. Hmm, I wonder what book I should pick out now. Amelia Earhart is my name, but flying airplanes is my game. Golly good day everyone. Do you know what I'm famous for? In 1935, I became the first pilot to fly across the Pacific Ocean. But I had an even better dream. I wanted to be the first woman to fly around the world. My sister and I love to play games outdoors. We pretended to travel to faraway places. I just adore airplanes as you can see. After earning my pilot's license in 1921, I was asked by David Lehman and the Phipps Guest family if I was interested in being the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. Behind me are letters we wrote to each other. They even named a restaurant after me right here in Lakeland, Florida at the Lakeland Linder Regional Airport, Earhart's Runway Grill. I'm Amelia Earhart reporting for WKPN. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me! This childhood saying came from a time when little boys and girls thought of their little sweethearts as they plucked a petal off a daisy. Flowers are another big item given on Valentine's Day, but since there's such a variety, it's hard to know which one to choose. I'm here at Petal Florist. Let's see what they have to offer. Roses are the most popular flowers given on Valentine's Day with long-lasting blooms and a strong fragrant smell. You can never go wrong with these. Tulips are the next most popular flower given on Valentine's that last a long time and are beautiful. Azaleas are a beautiful flower given in Valentine's flower arrangements. Wildflowers such as daffodils make a nice gift from the heart. You can even go out and pick these yourself. Petals also has specialty items such as Valentine's Day cookies and Godiva chocolates, my favorite. As you can see, there are many types of flowers to choose from. In this shop alone, they will send out four to 500 arrangements just on Valentine's Day. Be sure and pick some up for the one you love. I'm Kendall reporting for WKPN. Happy Valentine's Day. It's Kendall here with the pick of the day. See if you whiz kids can figure this out. What's red, juicy, and good to eat? Did I hear someone say apples? If you did say apples, then you are correct. Today's Apple Facts Day. Are you ready for me to apple your facts? Did you know that Americans can eat 19.6 pounds of apples in a year? 
The state where apples grow the best is Washington. The apple blossom is the state flower of Michigan. Apples are a part of the rose family, and apples are good for you and your body. Plus, they are all fat free. So is kids, make sure you're eating those fat free fruits and always remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Back to you anchors. Finally, it's the end of the trail. I made it. I'm Kendall and I've been hiking here at Lois Hart Park. Hiking is great exercise. Some people hike to spend time with family and friends or to spend time in nature. Let's take a hike and learn more. Hiking is an outdoor activity that takes place by walking in natural environments, usually on hiking trails. There are day hikers and backpackers. What's the difference, you ask? Good question. I am a day hiker. I finished my hike within the day. I need less equipment than a backpacker. You are probably wondering what is in my day pack. For a day hike, you'll need items that can keep you safe and comfortable. In my trusty lightweight backpack, I have food in case I get hungry, a map so I don't get lost, a water bottle in case I get thirsty, sunscreen, you know how hot the Florida sun can be, bug spray, so I won't get bitten, a watch, to, so I can tell the time of day, a flashlight, in case it gets dark, and a compass, also so I won't get lost. And don't you just love my hiking outfit? Clothes should be comfortable and keep you warm and dry. My hiking boots are sturdy and have grooves in them to keep me from slipping. Follow these hiking tips and you'll have an enjoyable day out on the trails. After hiking four miles, I'm going home now to soak my feet and treat my blisters. I'm Kendall, reporting from the great outdoors. Goal! And the pink team scores! Hey Wiz Kids, I'm here at my very own soccer game. My team and I are winning. Here's some history on soccer for you Wiz Kids. Some of you probably know soccer is the most played sport in the history of mankind. The governing body of soccer in 2004 officially stated that China was the birthplace of its game. Soccer is a fun and fast moving game. It's a great way to get some exercise. Now I must get back to my soccer team. Hope we win, whiz kids. Go Pink Fusion! That's our name, by the way. Back to you, anchors. Your teeth look great, no cavities. I'll see you back in six months. Welcome to the dentist. Don't you just love it when your dentist tells you have great looking teeth and zero cavities? Let's find out what you can do to have those healthy teeth. Your first teeth to come in are your baby teeth. They're important because they help develop the face and jaw of a baby. They also help babies chew when they start to eat more solid food and baby teeth help guide the permanent teeth into the correct position. Baby teeth begin to get loose and fall out as the permanent teeth begin to come in and so enters the tooth fairy. It is very important to take care of your baby teeth and your permanent teeth. To do this, you should brush your teeth at least twice a day. Floss to get out any food stuck in your teeth and visit your dentist every six months. They will clean your teeth and take x-rays to check for cavities. Eating fruits and vegetables is better for you and your teeth than eating candy and sugary soft drinks. That's it from the dentist's office. I hope to see you only twice a year. I'm Dr. Kendall giving you some great toothy advice. Happy Christmas everyone! Kendall here in England. And don't you just love my fancy hat? I'm off to tea with the Queen. But first, some English Christmas traditions. Many North American Christmas traditions come from England. Here's one that your family might know. That is, sending Christmas cards. Our family sends out cards. Does yours? Here are some more facts about Christmas in England. Christmas Day is December 25th. The weather is usually damp and cold. One old English tradition was lighting a Yule log. 
A Yule log is a big piece of firewood. I'm Kendall, reporting from England. See you back after I have my tea with the Queen and get back to the good old USA. Hey George, want to tell the kids why we're on their school's news show? <laughs> oh, alright, I'll tell them for you. Hey there kids, I'm H.A. Ray and this is my best friend George. We're here to give some information on who I am and what I do. Ready for my facts? My real name is Hans Augusto Riersbach. I was born on September 16th, today in 1898 in Hamburg, Germany. Then I moved to Brazil and became a salesman. I am also the writer of a series of kids' books. You may have heard of them before. They are the Curious George books. There are many in your own library, and your media center has two movies. Well, it's time for us to go. So, whiz kids, make sure you're checking out our books and read, read, reading. I'm H.J. Ray, and this is Curious George, signing off from your WKPN News. Say bye, George. <laughs>